part of celebrating diversity in St. Paul's, we are interviewing some girls about their culture. Where are you from? I'm from Egypt. My name is Gabriela Wojniczka and I'm uh, from Poland. Uh, my name is Julia Chukura. Um, I was born in Nigeria. Uh, hi, my name is Orama and I'm from Malawi. I'm Latoya. I'm from Botswana. Hello, I'm from Ukraine. Uh, my name is Anna. Hi, my name is Tanya and I'm from Sri Lanka. Hi, my name is Nia and I'm from Georgia. Oh, my name is Natalie and I'm from Brazil. Hi, my name is Serene and I'm from Libya. Hello, my name is Elena. I'm from Spain. Hi, my name is Ranjana and I'm from um, India. Hello, I'm Kian and I'm from the Philippines. Hi, my name is Shirley and I'm from China. Hi, my name is Sha and I'm from Vietnam. Hi, my name is Daisy and I was born in South Africa and my parents come from Congo. My name is Winnie Marie and I'm from the traveling community. Um, were you born in Poland? Uh, no, I was born here in Ireland. Um, yeah, I was born and I stayed there for five years of my life before I came here to Ireland. I was born in Malawi. Um, I left Ukraine in 2022 on 24th of February. Uh, I was born in Sri Lanka. Uh, yeah, I was born in Brazil. I was born here in Ireland. Um, most of my life I was in India and I came to Ireland two years ago, three years ago, two years ago. I was born here though, but I went back when I was a few months old and then I came here when I was six. Um, tell us more about your country. Uh, well, it's a very, <laughs> very big. Uh, 40 million is the population of Poland. Um, it's a very big country. It's overpopulated. Uh, it's a very good place for sightseeing. It has lovely food. Um, it has good music. Um, and it's a very friendly country. Uh, my country is like a very like sunny place and very people are very friendly and very welcoming. Uh, it has a lot of diversity. Uh, they are friendly, the citizens of the country are friendly, and it has a lot of nature. Um, Sri Lanka is in South Asia. The main religion would be Buddhism. Um, my country is like really historical, it's um, like it's really religious and people are like really welcoming and yeah. Uh, Brazil is a hot place obviously um we have carnivals and it's just a really fun country guys it's like it's in north africa it's like the main like religion is islam and it's like a fun and like nice country okay so firstly india is huge and even though it's huge i feel like everyone knows everyone and be it any festival or be it anything anything even small everyone just celebrates it with like together my country is in Southeast Asia. It's a very warm country and the people are really nice. Um, Vietnam is special because um, it's very different from most countries and um, um, the food, the culture, and like, you know, if you just, it doesn't look like any other countries when you walk outside the street and yeah. Well, in South Africa, it's I guess there's a lot of cultural things there. They, in South Africa and in Congo, they really like music a lot. So I guess that's a thing they have in common. Um, in my culture, you travel around a lot. Um, you used to sing songs and you used to wash your clothes by hand and not by anything else. How often do you go to Poland? Um, I go every summer. Yeah, I go every summer. I haven't really visited since I came. Um, I go every summer once every two years i try to visit like every single year in the summer but i think i have visited every single year except for covid of course well i haven't visited my country recently since i just i've only been here for a year and a half so but i'm hoping to visit my country in 2026 not really sure probably just if we get the chance to then yeah we would but i visit it every single year um what do you love about it and what makes your culture unique uh again the food i think <laughs> i 
I love Egypt because everyone is so nice. They have the best food, the best music, um, the best traditions, and everyone is just really nice to everyone. Um, the food and the culture. Just the culture, the food, and like the beaches, and just everyone there. Uh, the way, the way we dance, the way we uh, greet the elders, we respect them. I love the traditions for different holidays. Um, I think it's a culture. It's a really rich in culture. Um, they have there's a special region, so candy, and they have candy and dancers. They do this amazing dance. It's really cultural, traditional. Um, it's one of my favorite things. Um, like history, cause like it's really old country, and a lot of like places where like people can visit and like, you know, yeah. Um, the food. I love the food and like I love how like kind and how everyone is to me like when I go in like I don't feel judged at all. That's like the main thing that I like. Uh, I love Spain because the language, the culture and all the dances, the music, the people, the, the clothing, the performances, like the traditional dances probably about the different clothes we wear and the celebrations um my culture is special because um everything is outgoing like everything is big it's not like small when you have a sweet 16 it's huge if you have a wedding it's huge funeral there's tons like there's thousands of people coming so so what is your favorite dish uh it's go- uh, called gawampki and it's just like meat and it's like meat wrapped in cabbage with potatoes and like a tomato sauce it's delicious <laughs> um it's probably kushri it's the tra- traditional dish and you can find them anywhere for really cheap as well i'm Ibo, as i said so in my culture we eat like it's called unkobi it's it's a goat head but not specifically the goat head but like parts of the go ahead and it's really nice. Mm, I would say rice and beans. Uh, tripe. It's more like it comes from a cow. I don't know how to explain it. About food, I love our national soup. It's called borscht. It's made of beetroots and meat and uh, potatoes and it's really nice. I think one of my favorites would be indiapam and um, kiribat. Um, it's like kiribat is like rice, but then you put um, coconut milk into it, and it's just it's just a traditional dish that we make. Uh, it's like Georgian dumplings, but like the original one is with meat, and you can put like other stuff also, like cheese. Uh, it's called feijoada. It's basically just black beans and pork. It's like this dish, like it's a dessert dish. It's called asida. It's like this like batter in the middle and it has like honey around it and like you dip into it and like you eat it warm. It's like very nice, but it takes like so long to make. Yeah, I love paella. Um, there's this savory crepe called dosha and you have it with a curry called, it's made of lentils and it's yum. Yeah. My favorite food is called champurado and basically it's like porridge, but chocolate. Probably the egg fried rice and the oyster omelette. Um, the most popular one is pho nam boon and um, like nam is basically spring rolls. Um, so yeah. Mm, there are a couple because in Congo they um, usually eat a lot plant based foods, but like they add like spices and all that. So like this is um. Uh, food that's called fumbwa it's i can't explain wh- the way it is but it's really nice uh my favorite is spuds and cabbage it's bacon spuds and cabbage it's mostly for your iron how is your house different if i were to go to your house how is your house different than an an irish household um they're a lot bigger <laughs> uh And you can have like multiple families living in one house in a way so there's like an upstairs and a downstairs but there it's kind of like an apartment but it's a house (laughs) yeah um you'd probably see there would be a lot of tea everywhere like you'd have tea after every meal 
and then there'll be loads of like you'll always smell my mom cooking something and then obviously th my parents always bring little souvenirs back from Egypt so our house can feel like more like we're back home well we keep everything the same the language and just like try to not forget the culture um the houses there are more open so it's just you have like your own big place and um especially our house it's um all sand there's no concrete it's just near the beach i think my parents we speak more georgian than english and other like languages uh, we speak portuguese at home like we're like a big thing on islam and like we speak arabic in there and like we just have dishes we don't like Eat, we eat dishes from like other countries like we don't we don't just stick to Libya but like we of course eat other dishes from our country and just like life like that. We don't live in houses we live in apartments. Um, if someone who's not Indian just enters our house I think it's gonna be so colorful and everyone in the house is gonna be so welcoming and they're gonna treat you amazing. Probably the language because we mostly speak Chinese at my house. Um, Vietnamese homes are very like different to like any regular house like I used to have a very traditional Vietnamese house and how it was like laid out and we have a prayer room and like um Vietnam is like very like religious and um the like main religion is Buddhism and so um my parents are very religious so like it impacted you know on you know how we like um at home we very we still basically like remain with our culture like our culture is still with us if you get me it's like we uh don't separate ourselves from that um are there any traditional forms of dress in poland uh yeah well we have uh can't think of the name from the top of my head but they're like dresses and they're very they have like flowers and they're like very poofy <laughs> in a way uh, and each like state kind of has their own version of the dress in Ibo we dress in like a we wear beads and we put like beads on our head and we tie like a wrapper cow skin yeah um, we have a traditional clothes called uh, vyshevanka uh, it's basically white top and for for women it's a like, red skirt and for men is um, bottoms for really like baggy baggy bottoms called sharovare. Yeah, it is like really long dress and it has like long braids and all. And yeah, it's really pretty. Yeah, it's like a big dress, red with tops white. They dress. It's again it's so colorful to see, and there's different types of traditional clothing in every part of India that you visit. Have you ever? Um, face racism towards your country i have i think um once um someone just told me you, you should go back to your own country um you shouldn't even be here because all because we looked at him because he was african Egypt. <laughs> no not really no uh from russians uh on only from russians uh. um i think i think i have but it's not it's not like an everyday thing it's just time to time no uh, not really no yes um in town um like especially at night when i'm with my parents and um in primary school and junior school no um not to me particularly but i've seen my friends and my family experience it before uh no myself no uh, yeah, loads of times. Not really, but I guess since I was born in South Africa, like South Africa and Congo, they don't get along. So I guess occasionally, like rarely, I'll get some comments about that. What type of music is popular? Well, there's like a bit of everything and it's not like, there's not really a specific one that's the most popular, but um, my friends like to listen to Vietnam radio. The music, like, it's really good, like, it's probably the best in the Middle East and, like, in Northern Africa. Every country in North Africa, like, only listens to Egyptian music. Um, yes, music is really important, like, 
we have afro beats we have cultural music and it's like yeah it's really important mm, drums like there's specific type of drums and like different types of guitars but more traditional ones for musical instruments we have bandura is really big um, and heavy uh, strings instrument it's very like instrumental we have like the sitar and um these drums we call it the tabla it's just um you keep on your lap and you play there's like turbuka it's like this like circle round thing and like you hit it it's mainly used at like weddings and like stuff like that um instruments that are unique um in india they play flute a lot and there's um instruments called a tabla it's basically like a drum and you keep it on your lap and you play and there's a um not not really a guitar but like a huge um um instrument called sitar as well yeah i don't know how to say this but it's kind of like a flute but made out of a bamboo stick card. i show racism their red card i say no to racism I give racism a red flag i give racism the red card I give red cards to racism. I show racism the red card. I show racism red card. I show racism the red card. <laughs> I show racism the red card. I show racism in the red card. I show racism the red card. I show racism the red card. I show racism the red flag. I show racism the red card. I show racism the red card. I show racism the red card. Hi, my name is Sophie and I'm Irish and um, I'm sure you've all really enjoyed all the interviews with all the different ethnicities and um, nationalities and I'm sure it's been really interesting and I just wanted to share a bit about um, being Irish and living in Ireland. Um, so I think Ireland is really just a really welcoming country and it is open to people of all nationalities and all races and um, <laughs> um, we have lots of traditional Irish sports, which is like GAA, camogie, um, football, um, hurling, all the rest. And um, Ireland is really an open country and everybody in Ireland is always proud to be Irish. So um, yeah, I think it's a privilege. Show racism the red card. <laughs> So we've had a great morning here um, interviewing all of the students in the school about um, their traditions, their heritage, their culture. We're definitely, um, you know, we've learned so much from it. And I want to thank the girls for doing such an amazing job on this video. Um, this is a really important um, initiative that we're running in the school this year where we're showing racism the red card. And I thought the best way for us to start to do that was to recognise um, the diversity and the richness within our school community. Yeah, and um, as representative of the staff, we show racism the red card. Okay, thank you. I'm Louise. I'm Judy. I'm Lucy. I'm Sophie. I'm Michelle. Um, we're the team that put this video together and we realised how lucky we are to interview everyone and how lucky St Paul's is and how lucky everyone is to be a part of St Paul's because of how different and welcoming it is. Um, it's going to be a nightmare trying to edit this because everyone had, like, so much to say and it was all so interesting and we're just all so lucky to even be a part of the creative school and it just shows how everyone belongs here in St Paul's. Our diversity and difference uh, enriches us as a school community. We show racism the red card. Happy Give Racism the Red Card Day, everyone. Um, I'm really delighted to hear that nobody has experienced racism in St. Paul's. Really, um, we're, that goes really well with our core values of care, inclusion and respect. And we really hope that everybody knows that they're valued, that they belong here in St. Paul's and um, that they're important members of our school community. We. I um, are very sad to hear though that some people have experienced racism in the community or um, outside in wide, wider society and so I suppose one of the things of our core values means that you stand up against racism if you witness it. So um, 
make sure that you stand up for others, make sure that you are not part of racism in the community or in wider society. And if you do experience something negative, that you stand with those who are experiencing it and stand up against it. So do give racism the red card.